Hello, everyone. I'm getting used to some new technology here. Oh, great. Let's see if I can do this. Aha. Yes, as you can tell, I am no longer inside. I decided uh, we could do Spiritual Sunday outside in my backyard. <laughs> so at least it's a little different scenery. Welcome everybody who's watching. Yes, let's give a couple minutes. Hello, welcome. Great to see you. Yes, hello to you, Ian. Oh, let's see, how do I... I'm not gonna be able... Oh, there we go. Okay. We'll give a couple minutes. Oh, you know what I mean? Give me one second, I'll be right back. Let everybody, if you wanna just greet each other for a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I hope everyone's here. Please uh, just let me remind you to start a, a watch party. So if you're uh, streaming now, let other people have access to it. Yeah, so I'll give you a second to do that. Yes. I was, uh, also want to thank you very much. Last week we had over 5,000 views, almost 6,000 views on the um, video last week. So thank you, thank you. Your efforts are paying off. Really appreciate it. And let's see if we can uh, break 7,000 this week, even 10,000. That would be great, especially with everyone at home looking for answers. As we'll talk today, everybody needs a spiritual awakening. Everybody needs this wisdom and this technology, how they're going to deal with not only the situation now, but what happens afterwards. Right? It's all in our hands, and we want to make sure as best we can that it goes in the way of the light. Okay? <clears throat> all right. So let's get started together. You can say wherever you are, your friends who are joining us. Let's see if I can say our affirmation. Consciousness is everything. I raise my consciousness today to see the miracles and wonders of life. I commit myself to behave with greater love, compassion, and kindness towards all human beings. And if there's ever a time that we need it, it's all the more now. Okay. <clears throat> I see a few more people coming on. So let's start with this. We talk about consciousness as everything, right? And in various ways, that's all that Kabbalah is teaching us is how to keep shifting our consciousness. But what does that mean? When we talk about raising our consciousness, what does it really mean? So in Kabbalistic terms, raising one's consciousness means the ability of seeing beyond the five senses. To see beyond into what we would call the sixth sense, right? The realm beyond our five senses, where you and I understand there's an exact law of cause and effect. That's what we really would like to see. Because the reason that we are so confused with what's going on, even today in this, this whole coronavirus thing, we're not sure. You remember in the beginning when you first heard about it? What causes it? How come? What do you have to do? Where does it go? People didn't know. We want to know cause and effect. The whole basis of science is to understand a cause and effect. This causes this. This action creates this. This thing does this way. That's the whole basis. And you and I have, have the good fortune to be in spiritual science, the ultimate, universal, ancient, authentic spiritual science called Kabbalah. 
the technology of the Zohar. So we understand in all the details, if you really dig in to the study of the 10 luminous emanations, you will never, ever, ever, in probably even the next 50 or 100 years, you will never see such detailed understanding about the creation of this world. How we came, as we're about to mention, from the endless world, the world where there was only perfect light and no physicality, into this world of physicality. The Kabbalist wrote over th two, 3,000 years ago about the details, how that worked. In fact, I'll just tell you a quick story. When I was learning in uh, New York, when I first became a teacher, and we used to learn early morning, the 10 luminous emanations, twice a week for an hour and a half with the Rav. And along the, along the way came a gentleman who was on the pioneering, cutting edge. He was almost like the Tesla of his day, let's say. <clears throat> He was the, the creator of the first um, commercial space shot. He was essentially the creator of the barcode scanner. He was really on the cutting edge of science. And he happened to have had a background in ancient Hebrew. So as we were reading from the books, and these books were written based, yes, on thousands of years of teaching earlier, but they were written in the 1500s. So you're talking 500 years ago. And all of a sudden, we're reading something in the book, and this man, this scientist, stands up, stops the lesson, and he says, we are just understanding this now in science. We are just coming to understand how this works now. And you're telling me this is written 500 years ago. So he came to understand how advanced this wisdom of Kabbalah is, because as you and I often talk about, the Zohar is the blueprint of the universe. It's just that simple. Therefore, it embraces every religion, every nationality, every form of science, medicine, psychology, organic chemistry, math, physics, everything. Anything you could imagine is all rooted in this wisdom of the Zohar. And that's what this particular gentleman came to realize, that what he thought was cutting-edge physics had already been written 500 years earlier. So let's go back before the Big Bang. In the world that's called the endless world, there was simply the infinite light of the creator. That's as much as you and I as human beings can grasp. We cannot grasp the creator itself, or if you will, the emanator of this light. The closest thing we can get to is trying to wrap our heads around the infinite light of the creator, which is only sharing only illuminating, only fulfilling. That's it. And we were created in that endless world, our soul, as a container for that light. So the soul, the infinite vessel, that's the source of all our soul, was one. One vessel filled with the infinite light of the Creator. Without all the details, you can review Kabbalah 1 or take Kabbalah 1 if you haven't. We wanted to emulate the Creator. We wanted to have that same, if you will, sense of fulfillment, that sense of bliss that the Creator had by sharing its light. But in the endless world, we couldn't share our light because everything was complete light. So we had to create, from our point of view, some realm, some space that we could perceive of darkness, emptiness, lack, and void, and then we could share our light. So remember, we are one soul. There is only one vessel from which all humanity comes. We essentially, in simple terms, we closed our eyes and we imagined a physical universe. That, according to the Kabbalist, is the cause of the Big Bang. Scientists don't understand the Big Bang. They know there was. They don't know how the ball of matter came about. They don't know what caused it at that moment to explode, but we do. The moment you and I, as that one vessel, that one soul, said we want to be able to emulate the Creator, to take the light that the Creator put in our soul and share it, and therefore cause it to be manifest. So in that moment, we, again, imagined, if you will, this world. We created a physical world through what the scientists call the Big Bang. And therefore, the Kabbalists call this physical world the world of illusion. Why is it an illusion? Just think to any time you've been <laughs> watched a movie with friends. 
How many times have you ever had some of you say, oh, what a great movie. And some of you who were watching the same movie say, oh, it was horrible. That's the idea of the world of illusion. There was one situation. There was, in that case, there was a movie. But each person had their own way to see it. That's what made its illusion, meaning it wasn't just good or just bad, but consciousness, the way per people perceived it. Because once we closed our eyes and created this physical universe, we've been able to perceive, one, two forces in the universe, the light and darkness, and we've been able to make that choice, which side we are going to choose which way we are going to perceive it. That's the old, is it half full or half empty? Well, technically it's one glass. How you perceive it determines what comes back to you. So as we plunged ourselves into this physical world, the Kabbalists explain the 99% realm is still the realm of the endless. It never disappeared. Like right now, if I close my eyes, you don't disappear. But from my perception, you disappear. If you close your eyes, from your perception, I disappear but I didn't really disappear. So then in the same way, we plunged ourselves into this world by spiritually, if you will, closing our eyes and therefore creating the limitations of the five senses. We do not see the endless world with our five senses. We do not see exact cause and effect. All the great Kabbalists who were able to raise their consciousness beyond the five senses were able to see not only the exact operating or operation of the laws of the universe, but they could see exactly cause and effect. So no matter what came their way, they saw what the cause was. How many times have we done something or experienced something and we don't realize what the cause is? Something happened, oh, how did that happen? And then maybe a little while later, you stop and you look back and say, oh yeah, I made this choice, did this thing, did this thing, and it led up to this. But part of us didn't realize it in the moment. We didn't realize it. That's the aspect of illusion. That's being caught in what we call the 1% world. So we have the 99% world of perfection, cause and effect, total and absolute unity. We have the 1% the world of the five senses of what looks like chaos and confusion because we don't see the exact operating system of cause and effect. We don't see it. Many of us have learned to see more. Those of you who believe in reincarnation, we can understand that something we may have done in a past life comes back exactly cause and effect in this life. So we've been able to grasp more and more of that idea, but we still don't see all of it. We don't see all of it. Now, I want to lead us to another point. According to the Kabbalists, the Zohar is the spiritual understanding of everything in the universe, including the Bible, the five books of Moses. The five books of Moses is like the body. It's like the clothing. It shows the outside. It was uh, factual. It did take place historically. But the more important part is what goes on in the inside. The technology and the illumination and the wisdom that it's teaching us for 2020. So we go back to the first human beings, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are the manifestation of that endless vessel. So it's still one soul. It's still all seven and a half billion people, if you will, embodied in those two forms called Adam and Eve. All the male souls in Adam, all the female souls in Eve. So we're still seven and a half billion people, but now essentially embodied in Adam and Eve. The key that I wanted to bring out today, they were not physical. They had no flesh and blood. They were ethereal beings. They had just arrived, so to speak, out of the endless world. So when you think of spirits, um, angels, things like that, with ethereal bodies, that was Adam and Eve. So even at that moment, there was no distinction between people. There was just ethereal bodies. Okay. Now, what happened? Adam and Eve, as you know the story, with the temptation of what we call that spiritual parasite, the opponent, they gave in to the negative temptation which means they didn't exert their spiritual muscle. They didn't exert the light of the creator in a sharing way to stay in the 99% realm, to stay beyond the five senses. They were taunted and tempted to fall into, partake of, as it says, eat of the tree of knowledge, good and evil. 
And that means suddenly we all plunged ourselves. We all, not them, we all. We all fell into the illusion. We created a stronger limitation of the five senses. We could not see cause and effect. And essentially we distance ourselves from the light of the creator and the light of our perfect, pure light beingness. And from that point forward, we've been able to see chaos, confusion, darkness, the good and evil. You see what looks like good, what looks like evil. Things that we used to think uh, or that you think may feel good are actually not good for you. The things that may not feel good are actually good for you. You and I have learned from Kabbalah one forward. Every challenge, every difficult situation is actually our opportunity to reveal more light. It's our opportunity to fix our mistakes of the past and reveal more light and blessing for us and for everyone. Because remember, even though Adam and Eve, so to speak, were split from the one, the soul is unchanged. The soul is still the same. The soul is still one. The infinite endless world never disappeared. So there still is right here, right now, as you look around the world, there still is an endless world of unity, peace, love, and harmony. It's just to the extent we limit ourselves with our five senses, to the extent we've plunged ourselves and immersed ourselves in this world of five senses, we do not see that realm. That's why most people considered Kabbalah like mystical, because the great Kabbalists could see beyond the five senses. And therefore they could tell us about all the things going on around us. They could see the spirits and the souls and all the angels and everything else. And so people who were locked in or trapped in the 1% thought they were crazy. How could they see this? They're talking, you know, crazy things. But you and I have come to understand, especially now in 2020, more and more people, more and more teachings out there talking about people being able to see auras and energies and, you know, connecting to your guardian angels. Karen Berg has wonderful classes on finding your angels. You can go on Kabbalah.com and find them. So remember, it was at that point when Adam and Eve, you and I, partook of the world of the one percent the tree of light the tree of knowledge good and evil that's when it says read your bible even in its coded way it says then god made coats of skin coats of skin means at that point the ethereal body which was more unlimited suddenly became limited we gave into the five senses the physical material world and therefore the coats of skin are a code for this, flesh and blood. We took on flesh and blood. We took on internal organs, etc. That's why as Adam and Eve, before they separated from that endless light, they, in essence, like you and I do with our meditations, they could scan all of nature around them and draw its nourishing energy. Like you and I, when we do the meditations on the 72 names, or those of you who are scanning from the Zohar, etc. You're using the Hebrew letters, which are particles of light, shining the light of the Creator to nourish and awaken your soul by scanning. That's the remnant of our piece of Adam and Eve that's still connected to the 99% realm, that's still connected to that perfect Garden of Eden, because even that Garden of Eden didn't disappear. Even the Bible says we were thrown out. It doesn't say the Garden of Eden disappeared. It's still here. Our work, the whole mission of the Kabbalah Center is to teach so many people this wisdom and technology that so many people will have the Zohar, help us spread the Zohar around the world, spread this wisdom that the light will be so bright that the Garden of Eden will show up again because it's just uncovering the illusion of darkness, lack, and limitation. That's it, like a cover on a table. You pull the tablecloth off, then the table is there, the glass, the wood, the metal, whatever it is. The same thing. Our job is to remove the cover of darkness and reveal the light by acting like the light, emulating the light. Wow. Hello, hello, hello. I really like this. And please remember, please, if you haven't started a watch party, I thank you for starting one so we can reach again thousands and thousands of people. So we have now Adam and Eve. The soul didn't change. We took on the body. We took on separation. Now, even at that point, we were still all the same. Read your Bible. Until we come to the Tower of Babel, 
generations later, it says very clearly, all the world was one language, one set of words. So even though we made the mistake as Adam and Eve and plunged ourselves into the 1% over the 99% and created flesh and blood, took on flesh and blood, we were still the same. Again, the soul never changes. It is the same material that the creator gave us in the endless world. And at this point, even the bodies and the language were the same. And then, unfortunately, we did something stupid again. We rebelled against the light. We can't rebel against God, per se. Thought we were smarter, fell into the 1%, gave in to the temptation of the opponent, thought we could do what we wanted to do. <coughs> that we, Even though we had the power of God in us, we are not God itself. We have the power. I get in my car, I am not the car, but I can use the power of the car to go where I want to go. So the same way, we have the power of the creator. So what did that opponent put on our head? Oh yeah, you're better than God. You know, So build that tower, metaphys metaphorically, build that tower. And at that point, what happened? All the languages came into existence, creating uh, many languages, Babel, like we say, Babel, Babel, all the languages other than Aramaic and Hebrew, that was, which is our source, that's the one language of the soul, right? Which is why every one of us can scan the Hebrew Aramaic letters, which are particles of light and have a spiritual awakening because that's infused in our soul. So then not only came the confusing of the languages, but also scattered people all over the world. And if you will, that's where the different races, nationalities, colors of skin, et cetera, et cetera. Did the soul change? The soul is the same. The soul never changed. It is that perfect vessel filled with that perfect light of the creator waiting for us to extend it out, to shine it out into every part of our world unconditionally and remove all the darkness, all the illusion, ultimately remove the angel of death. Simple. But <clears throat> unfortunately for thousands of years, We've still been fighting with each other. We're still pointing fingers. They did this to me. They made me do that, etc. Whether it's individually, in a family, in a community, in a country, or in the world. And look today, 2020, with what's been going on these last few months, everybody's pointing fingers. Why did they do it? If they had done this, if somebody did this, everybody else's fault. The thing that Satan, the opponent, is making us forget is that we have the power of the creator inside of us. That opponent wants us to withdraw to fragment, to separate our job, the wisdom of Kabbalah, the power of the teaching of the Kabbalah Center, unity, shine the light, light creates unity. If you're in a dark room and you're walking around, you can bang in, so to speak, to the chair, to the table, to the shoes on the floor, all the different things are in essence fragmented in the darkness. Once you turn on the light, the light illuminates everything and envelops them all so essentially, they're all unified. They are all parts of that room. They are no longer fragmented in the light. So too, as we let our light shine on everyone everywhere, then we are unified, not with their negativity, <coughs> because like attracts like. So we will be unified with the light in their soul on a consciousness level, because that's what we've been missing, is the consciousness of unity, not the unity. The one soul could never fragment. That one soul of the endless world can never be divided. We cannot be seven and a half truly billion separate individuals. We see the flesh and blood look separate, but the soul is interconnected forever because the endless world is eternal and infinite. The vessel is endless and infinite. The light is endless and infinite. So there cannot be fragmentation. But when we're caught in the five senses, that's what we see. So here comes maybe a tough part for today. Those of you who have taken classes, you've heard this. We can all apply it on a little higher level. The Kabbalists teach very simply. Everything you look at, everyone you see, when you look around, is a mirror of you. Everyone, everything, every situation, etc., 
is a mirror of you. So from our flesh and blood point of view, there are seven and a half billion worlds, but only one mirror. So when I look out at the world, everything I see or experience is a mirror of my consciousness. So just like your mirror at home, if you wake up in the morning and you look in your mirror and your hair is messy, do you take the comb and you fix the hair in the mirror? That would be foolish. We'd call those people idiots, yes. Putting makeup on the mirror, brushing the teeth in the mirror, no. You know that the mirror is just a reflection. So you know if you fix your hair, fix your makeup, whatever, brush your teeth, that the mirror will reflect back that change. So too, all this pointing the finger, etc. people need to stop. If we really want to remove the pain and suffering, if we want to have peace, we have to stop pointing the finger and realize whatever I see in them, there's a reflection of it in me. Now, <clears throat> it may not be to the same extent. There are people out there whose issue is anger and they commit violent acts out of their anger. You and I, if that's something that pushes your button, then you have to look inside you to your piece of anger. It may not be violent anger, but you may be anger saying a curse word. You may be anger, angry and criticize somebody and strike out at somebody. But those are actions of anger. So when you're looking at somebody or something out there and you're so angry, I'm so angry with them, and how could they do that? And looks going on and da 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 that you have to fix you. Because just like the mirror, when you fix your anger, you fix your fear you fix your insecurity, whatever it is that you're blaming them, look for a similar peace in you. Because like the mirror, when you fix your peace, then the world around you will reflect that change. That's raising our consciousness, to see the cause and effect, to understand that my eyes don't see the mirror. My soul, my heart, my sixth sense understands the mirror of the world around me. And so if I really want to take advantage of all that's going on in the world, all the lessons that the universe is sharing with me, all of my cause and effect from the past so I can fix it and reveal my pure and perfect light beingness, then it's essential that we look at everything as a mirror. Now, does that <clears throat> discount or change the fact that the other person did what they do? No, they have their own tikkun. They have their own cause and effect. So if somebody came to you and said something nasty and awakened your anger and you're now screaming at them or whatever, pause, start realizing, change your anger, change your hurt, change whatever it is, and your world will change. They have their cause and effect, you have your cause and effect. By learning to see the world as our mirror, it's like you can have feedback everywhere. Isn't that what we would like? How do I know if I'm on the path of the light? Look around you. See how much light you see in the world. See how much light you see even in the people that yesterday you thought were the bad people. The ones who are causing all your problems and the trouble and this, that, and other thing. When you are, as you can see more light in them, then you know you're more and more on the path of the light. As a person looks at the world around them and sees more darkness, more gloom, more chaos, more negativity, more lack and void, then that's what they're reflecting. Because that's what they have inside. That's what they're feeling inside of them. Is the soul changed? No. The soul is still perfect. The soul is still full. There is no emptiness. So what's the issue? The issue is they're not expressing their light. You walk in a dark room, it's because you didn't turn the light on. It's still dark. You turn the light on, the darkness goes away. That's it. So wherever you walk into a dark spot, a sense of lack or void, that's where you know you have the opportunity to emulate the Creator fulfill what you came here to do, shine a piece of your light out into the world. Make your world from your side illuminated. Because otherwise, a person is just doomed to keep repeating the same thing over and over again. In the moments we're truly objective and honest with ourselves, and we stop and we look back on our life, we can see there was a pattern of repetitive, challenging situations whether it was relationship or business or family or health or politics or economics, whatever it is, you can see that there is a repetitive pattern. Sure, it may have been a little different scenario over in this place, a little bit different over there, et cetera, et cetera, but essentially it was all the same. Like looking in a mirror, every mirror you look into, you see reflections of you, do you not? You in the suit, you in the bathing suit, 
you in the casual clothes, you with your hair up, messy, down, whatever, glasses, no glasses. Everywhere you see a reflection, a mirrored sit, um, uh, surface, you see yourself. It can be in your bathroom. It can be walking in a, in a, uh, on the street and see the reflection in the windows, etc. It's always you. Take that lesson to heart. The world is your mirror and use it to your greatest advantage to raise consciousness. Take control over cause and effect in your life. They have their cause and effect. If you don't act like them, their cause and effect will not be the same as yours. You act like the light, you move to a higher realm beyond all that, the, that limitation and illusion. They're staying in the realm of limitation and illusion, that's what they're stuck in. So we do not have to be in that. But they scream, you scream. They're angry, you're angry. They're fearful, you're fearful. Then you're staying in the same realm. So of course, similar things will keep happening and you'll keep being stuck with those people. You want to get rid of negative people or toxic people in your life? Shine so much light on them that the light will push away their darkness. Your only hope and it's their only hope. Now, something that I want to go a little more mystical with this whole idea of a mirror or cause and effect how what goes around comes around so the kabbalists write again beyond our five senses because the kabbalists could see this the kabbalists write rabbi isaac luria in the 15 in the 16th century he writes from the biblical story of when jacob took his 70 souls into egypt because his son Joseph had become second to Pharaoh, second to Pharaoh, leader basically of the whole physical world up to that point. So it says, the Ari, we call him the Holy Lion, Rav Isaac Luria, he writes that the Egyptians, at the time that Joseph and Jacob were in Egypt, became through reincarnation the Israelites that were enslaved in Egypt and left Egypt in the story of the Exodus with Moses. So think about it. The Egyptians of one point became the Israelites, the children of Israel, 100 years later. Therefore, we really need to stop and pause and remember, Adam and Eve had only ethereal bodies. The soul is the same. The soul is one. Up to the time of the Tower of Babel, we were all the same language. We essentially all look the same. So only after, again, falling into the illusion, greater fragmentation, different colors, nationalities, religions, etc., backgrounds, cultures, etc. But the one thing that never changed, the soul. The material of the soul, the perfection of the soul, the power of the soul. So here we sit now, you wonder why people are pointing the finger at everybody else and why people hate some people and they're even violent towards others, etc., etc. More than likely because they used to be, as the Ari tells us, in a previous incarnation. And by doing negativity and coming back as other people gives them the opportunity to say, no, I don't want to hate them because of their color, their language, their religion, their nationality or whatever. I want to connect. I want to rise above my five senses. I want to see the unity in the heart and soul of every person. I want to be able to live in this physical world, but live from the 99%. The Kabbalah Center has been teaching us that our work is not to be out of the physical world. We need to live in the physical world. We need to go to work. We need to have things. We need to deal with family and friends and people around us, etc. But we need to be guided by the 99%. We need to live with unconditional love. And again, unconditional love doesn't mean you accept everybody's behavior. Unconditional love means no matter what they do, <coughs> you and I are going to send light. Unconditional love, connect to the light in their soul, which means I'm sharing more light. My life is more blessed, my mirror reflecting more light, and I've reached into their soul to create an awakening in them of their perfect light beingness. The more and more of us that are shining light unconditionally that way, 
And again, doesn't mean we have to accept bad behavior. Doesn't mean we have to hang out with all the negative people. But if we move away from people, at least do yourself a favor and move with the light by having shine light in place of the darkness. So you can still tell them, no, I will not accept that, but I'm shining light to their soul. Because the more light I increase coming out of my soul, the more the world everywhere will reflect back to me more light. So then our job is to raise our consciousness. Look at all the people around the world. They're only fighting because they're caught in the illusion. You and I have the great blessing to be part of the Kabbalah Center. We can stand back. We can see a bigger picture. We are already. Just look at the people, even now, just the people who are watching us right now from all over the world, the Far East, the Near East, the Middle East, North and South of the equator, etc. The Kabbalah Center is unifying through love, unconditional love, kindness, compassion, through spreading this universal teaching of the Zohar around the world. We have united beyond language, culture, race, etc. Going beyond. And again, it doesn't mean you have to change your religion, obviously your culture, things like that. But take the one thing that's universal, the one thing that has never changed in all these thousands of years, the light of your soul, the perfection in your soul, let it emanate in a higher level, in a brighter level. Let's understand when the Zohar says there is only the infinite light, and therefore if we need more light, we need more blessing, that light can only be extracted out of the darkness because it's our limitation of the five senses that we call darkness that's hiding the light that we feel we're missing. Our soul is missing nothing. It has the 100%, just let it shine out. So in this time, this coronavirus and everything else that happened before, the ups and downs with the economy and the politics, etc., has been going on for the last number of years very intensively. Let's not fall to the fragmentation and the illusion of the opponent. Let's not give in to that separation and say, well, it's because of them, this and the other thing. The opponent is smart. It's got a very intelligent programming. First, it got us caught in the economics. Then it got us caught in the immigration. Then it got us caught in politics. Now it's getting us caught in the, the coronavirus. We need, as a collective humanity, you and I and all the people who are connected together through the Kabbalah, through the Kabbalah Center, we need to unite ourselves. We need to spread so much light that after this corona thing falls away, it will not just be the same world again with all its ups and downs and its chaos, but because you and I understand the technology and we are making greater use of the technology, we are extracting light from the darkness because that darkness called the angel of death in 2020, Kabbalistically, is very near his demise. But just like a wounded animal, when you got him cornered, he's going to fight stronger. And that's what's going on now. The Zohar says very simply, in these days we're in now, as we come to the removal of pain, suffering, and death, the end of the angel of death, it's going to be very extreme. It's going to be very dark and very light. Like the chaos, the gray area, so to speak, is moving away. It's in our hands to make sure that there's more and more light, that we're drawing more and more people. Like will attract like. The more light we shine, we draw the light from people, we draw them to us, to this wisdom like magnets. We draw to our individual life. More and more light-filled people, experiences, circumstances, clarity, understanding. We can fix everything we've ever done since we were part of Adam and Eve. It's here now. The technology is available. All we have to do is be beyond our five senses. Don't give in to that illusion. There's a very nice poem that I heard many, many years ago that I think fits this. It's by an Edwin Markman. Markham. It says, they drew a circle and left us out. But love and I had wit or wisdom to win. We drew a bigger circle and included them in. You and I, friends and students of the Kabbalah Center, we have that capability of drawing such a big circle. We include every human being in that circle of light. And when people are immersed in the light, it's like throwing people who fell in the mud 
in this huge, huge, let's say, pool of water, the mud just starts to fall off. And the cleanliness, that purity of our soul that existed from the time of Adam and Eve becomes revealed again. It's in our hands. Take responsibility for your actions. Don't blame other people. Just act, cause and effect. I want more light, I act more like the light. We have the possibility, we have the tools, we have the people. All we need is your help to have the resources to be able to spread so much Zohar that that light is so bright that the fact that we haven't seen the Garden of Eden will disappear and we'll see the Garden of Eden here everywhere. People are already starting to comment how much more peaceful the world is getting in many ways, how much good is coming, people unifying through the difficulty. It's in our hands to make sure that it is an eternal change, that it's not temporary, it's not just while things are tough, and then when things get easy again, we'll go back to normal. No, we need to create a new normal. Unconditional love, greater love, peace, kindness, and compassion towards all human beings even the ones that we may want to be distant from, but we're still emanating unconditional love. We have the power, we have the tools, we're gathering the people. Each one of us have the ability of expanding this out to millions and millions of other people. We can reach the world. It is in our hands. We have the tools, the technology, the capability. And I want to thank you for all of your support. And I, I ask of your continued support Orders are online, send it to somebody, donate to the center, help us reach out to more people, help us spread this wisdom, help us make so much light revealed in the world that there'll be only one choice, unconditional love. And that's when peace and harmony and joy will rule the world. So God bless. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your watch parties. Even after the fact, tell your friends. They can watch us again. You can spread it even after the fact. Let other people know. I thank you for everything. I th also, your suggestion. Somebody sent a suggestion. I thought it was very, very amazing suggestion. For those of you <clears throat> who would like to book time, someone, someone wrote me and literally said, you know, she's been doing different uh, consultation on Zoom. And she writes me, she says, you know, I would for sure pay for time with a Kabbalah teacher. So I thought, great, you know, I'm, I'm at home anyway. We're kind of isolated here, right? I do classes on Zoom, et cetera. So I'd like to throw it out there for those of you who would like to have a session, you know, maybe some spiritual counseling, some consciousness awakening, please just Facebook me and we can take care of that. We can arrange that, all right? So I thank you. Let's take a minute, one, just to bless the offering and those who would like to go on the Facebook page, just make sure it's there. Uh, okay. Oh. Okay, because we're on here, aren't we? Okay, so I'll put the link after our meditation, but let's do a meditation. Just envision. I know some of you, it may be difficult. Anything that you can share, those of you who are still okay, the more you share, the more you get in return and help support us. We have a fund. There are people who are asking to be part of the community membership. And so we're, we're collecting for a, a scholarship fund to help people who are having difficulty, but yet at the same time want to access this wisdom to raise their consciousness, to improve their lives and to share with other people. So the gifts that you give can also be directed towards that, all right? So just whatever it is, just open your heart, open your soul. Appreciation for all the blessings, appreciation and gratitude for this wisdom that you and I have been beneficiaries of. To be able to learn the true technology of the spiritual realm so that we can operate in the 99% and make the 1% more peaceful, more loving, more serene, more harmonious. And so knowing that everything we have and everything we are comes from the Creator, 
It is our happiness and joy. It is our blessing to be able to share that with others through our gifts, to Spiritual Sunday, to the Kabbalah Center, where we've received spiritual enlightenment and awakening. We are grateful. We inject our light, our love, and our blessing into these gifts. So it goes out and reaches billions of people on the planet, awakening the light of the Creator inside their soul, that they know truly in their heart and soul we are one, we are in it together. As we all pull up, we draw everybody else into higher consciousness with us. In appreciation and gratitude, we send our gifts out into the world to see in our time peace on earth, goodwill towards all mankind. And we say, Amen. Thank you very much. Have a marvelous, marvelous spiritual Sunday. Or for some of you, it's already Monday. Thank you for spreading this uh, wisdom through watch parties, sharing the videos, sending people to Kabbalah.com. And please don't forget, I put it on one of my posts. The mission is spreading the Zohar. Remember, I showed you a few weeks ago the verse from Naso. The only way we can remove the angel of death with mercy is literally the books of the Zohar. So the faster we spread them, the faster all the chaos disappears. Because once there's no darkness, there will only be love, peace, and compassion. So thank you. Have a marvelous, marvelous day. Lots of love and blessings.